When I come down this boulevard, just cut me slack, cause I work hard, no, I don't need a bodyguard, cause no one backs me down, you know, I can't buy diamonds, make or save, but I put food upon this table, I do everything I'm able, and no one backs me down, I'm just a Sheltered from the rain Well, do I look any different? Than Mel Gibson, yes, but you can come in anyway. <laughs> Shell, today everything changed. The heavens opened up, God reached down, took me by the shoulder and said, Lenny Callahan, this is your day. <laughs> what? I get to the hotel early, and sitting there in a ray of light, calling to me, Lenny, psst, Lenny, there's this big fat alligator wallet with 500 bucks in it. Oh, so you turn it in, you got a reward. How'd you know that? Because I know you, and you're honest, and you would never steal. That's exactly what Mr. Evans said. And who, pray tell, is Mr. Evans? He's director of personnel for the hotel chain. It was his wallet. That's great. What's the reward? The break of a lifetime, Shell. There's a big party for all the executives Saturday night, and we're invited. No cash, huh? <laughs> They've got this new promote from within policy, Shell. Do you know what this means? Country clubs, imported beers, and honey roasted nuts. <laughs> Dark socks, a golden retriever, and looking down our noses at people like us. <laughs> this is the news I've waited for. I never gave up on you, Dad. Never. <laughs> oh, I think you're both overreacting just a little. I mean, this is just an invitation to a party. Oh, it's much more than that, Shell. This is our chance to skyrocket to the middle. <laughs> I never went to college. I never learned any white-collar skills like stealing from the poor. Now, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. I've got nothing, period, except my beautiful wife and our three lovely money pits. <laughs> No, we're going to parlay this party Saturday night into a house at the beach. Saturday night? What am I going to wear? Well, it's formal, you know, tuxedos, evening gowns. What do you got in that category? My wedding dress. <laughs> uh, I got it covered. Eddie's getting me a tux from a friend of his from next to nothing. Yeah? So you go up and buy the most beautiful gown you can find. Really? Money's no object. <laughs> 60, 70 bucks, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, I'll go call Bob Mackey. Daddy, something's wrong with Fuzzball. Oh, the rat is sick. <laughs> Fuzzball is a hamster, not a rat. Look, he's losing big clumps of hair. What do we do? Well, the first thing we do is change his name to Patches. <laughs> Come on, let's go to the vet. They have emergency hours, I call. Tracy, honey, why don't we wait till morning? Maybe he'll be better. And maybe he'll be dead. Please, Daddy, I implore you. <laughs> Implore! Remember that word? We'll use it at the party. <laughs> what is that? It's a cat. May have been a cat yesterday, but it's not a cat now. <sighs> Who's next? I believe we are. Yeah, what are we here? A hamster. Uh huh. Name? Lenny Callahan. Big name for little hamster. Oh, you mean a hamster? Give us a second. Baldy. I beg your pardon? The hamster's name is Baldy. Oh! <laughs> Baldy does not look very good. He's Tom Cruise compared to that cat over there. What's he got? He's got everything. Vitamin deficiency, skin disorder, diarrhea. Okay, so he's going bald and he's got the runs. What's that mean? <laughs> means a dead hamster. This could put me in therapy for a long, long time. Is there anything you can do? Well, I can give him some medicine. You follow instructions. He just may make it. Well, if there's a chance for him, let's do it. Thanks, Daddy. It's all right. Give some of this and some of this. Huh, some of this. It's 50 bucks and you gotta clean and dry his bottom five times a day. Let me get this straight. I give you 50 dollars 
and I get to wipe a hamster's butt? Mm -hmm. What do I get for a hundred? <laughs> What do you think? Well, I've been wiping his bottom for two days. <laughs> and I can tell you one thing, Tracy. You'll never get a pony. <laughs> oh, Dad, wait till you see Mom in this dress. It's a total knockout. It's unbelievable. Oh, any mommy has the best dress in the world, and it only costs $210. My first car didn't cost $210. <laughs> yeah, but I'm easier to park. <laughs> Where's your tux? Eddie hasn't shown up yet. Biggest night of my life when I entrusted to my genius brother. Honey, what are we gonna do if he doesn't show up? Well, on the way to the party, we'll stop at a restaurant and I'll roll a head waiter. <laughs> Tracy, honey, get the door. Your babysitters are here. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Right. We're gonna have a great Grandma. time. We have to clean my hamster's bottom two more times tonight. Well, there's some good news right off the bat. <laughs> Will you do, Grandpa? Sure, sweetheart. For you, anything. Thanks. You see, Baldy, even Grandpa loves you. You bet I love him. That thing's disgusting. Why don't you flush it down the toilet? <laughs> I can't do that to a favorite pet. You do it while they're in school. The old one dies, goes down the drain. You buy a new one, pop it in the cage, the kid comes home from school, and boom, a miracle. Complete recovery. We did it all the time. Remember Petey? Little Petey, my goldfish? You think Petey was one fish? <laughs> you think Lassie was one dog? You flushed Petey down to John? Petey one, Petey two, Petey 17. <laughs> all parents do it. It's in the handbook. Hey, Doc. Hey, where you been? Uh, Vito had a little trouble getting his trunk open. You got my tuxedo out of a trunk of a guy named Vito? No, the tuxedo was in a house. Vito was in a trunk. <laughs> What was he doing in the trunk? Well, you know, trunk things. Kicking, screaming, trying to get out. <laughs> Why was he in the trunk? I don't know. I didn't get the tape off his mouth to ask him. <laughs> well, is he all right? What, are you his mother? You want to see the tuxedos or what? Yeah, let me see the tux. Okay, first you got a couple of choices here. You got the elbow stocks, baby. Huh? Very roomy. <laughs> okay, moving right along, we got the Wayne Newton tux here. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> That looks like Wayne. Yeah. Eddie. Okay, you want boring? I've got that, too. Here, try this on. This better fit. Hey, look at that. It fits like a glove. Yeah, but I want it to fit like a suit. Oh, Dad, where do you see Mom? She's going to blow everybody away. And I take all the credit. I personally help pick it out. Well, how do I look? Honey, you look... You look like you're hiding two bald men in there. That reminds me, I left my headlights on. <laughs> Lenny, what do you think? I think you look sensational. Okay, well, good night, everybody. Hey, yeah, see you later. Thanks for coming See you in. later. Listen, Shell, if you drop anything tonight, let me pick it up. this play shell huh? look at these people look at this food look at this one it's made out of ice when i get the big promotion one of the lake full of these things <laughs> len len callahan hey i'm glad to see you here callahan hey i'm glad to be here too i'm thrilled uh mr evans uh this is my wife uh my wife uh shelly you know, <laughs> i would have gotten it yeah <laughs> Well, he is a real great guy, this husband of yours, and we got big plans for Lan. We are going to groom him for an executive position. Ooh. Now, would you hurry up and sign in, please? I got a lot of people I want you to meet, huh? <laughs> well, it's nice to see. It's nice to see both of you. What? <laughs> I had no idea Callahan had such a beautiful wife. I'm up here. Ah. <laughs> you know, you could be a real asset to your husband. I can think of lots of ways you could help his career. Your name, please? Callahan. The amazing Lenny Callahan. <laughs> you find me under the guy that's going to kill his brother. Yes, here you are. Just sign right next to your name. Do you know what a man who can make love all night long has for breakfast? 
Well, this morning I had an egg, coffee, and toast. <laughs> Well, um, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to go help my husband find our table. You want to really help your husband? You know, I worked at this hotel for five years. I've never been on this floor before. Really? What do you do here? <laughs> well, actually, I'm the doorman, but I finally managed to open a door for myself. I'm here for a very big promotion. Lenny, uh, I want to leave. Why? We just got here. Okay, fine. You stay, but I want to go. Are you all right? Yeah, and it's, it's uh, fine. I'll just, um, I'll take a cab home. What's going on? What's happening? It's not important. Talk to me, Shell. This no, is no, important. No, you're going to get too upset. Look, you just stay here and I'll meet you at home later. I won't get upset. Come on, what's wrong? Mr. Evans just made a pass at me. What? What do you mean he made a pass at you? What do you mean? What do I mean? Shell, he's a classy guy. He wouldn't do that. No, he's not, Lenny. He's a real creep. Well, whatever he said, it couldn't have been that bad. Oh, yeah? Try this. I'll be right back. Now we can go. Mom, Dad, we're home. Oh, hi. So, how were the kids? I don't know. We fell asleep right after you left. Excuse me. <laughs> so, how was your first formal dinner? I think Big Hit says it all. Good night. You throwing us out? Consider it a gentle toss. <laughs> oh, I get it. Saturday night, come home early from a party. Remember what we used to do, Pat? Yeah, I remember. Do you remember? Yeah. Lenny, we're going to go. Unbelievable, huh? Well, he goes to the house at the beach. Boy, I wish I hadn't worn that dress. What are you talking about? Well, the truth is, you could have worn a nice conservative dress, the wife of a future executive dress. But no, you had to take out Simon and Garfunkel and show them to the whole world. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I losing my mind? Are you blaming this on me? I'm not blaming you for anything. I'm just saying the whole thing is your fault. You shouldn't have worn that dress. <laughs> Didn't you say I look great in this dress? You did. You do. But it's too much of a good thing. I expected a posse of nursing babies to follow us home. <laughs> Honey, you're upset. You're not thinking. I know you, and, and you don't mean what you're saying. Because if you did, I'd, I'd have to crush your head like a walnut in your sleep. <laughs> You can't blame this on me. Hey, you were the hothead. You didn't have to deck him. Hey, I didn't go in there to hit him. I just went in and it just happened. We were talking man to man, you know. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Then a dove came out of my pocket carrying a king of diamonds and I dropped him. Lenny, I wore this dress because I wanted you to be proud of me. I wore this dress because it makes me feel beautiful. It makes me feel like a woman. Daddy. Daddy, Baldy's hyperventilating. We have to go to the vet right away. Sweetheart, we can't go to the vet every time Baldy wheezes. It's expensive. I won't eat as much. I'll give up my allowance. I'll get a job in the sweatshop. Doing what? Sweating. <laughs> go take care of your daughter's hamster. I'll still be mad when you get back. <laughs> Next. Let me talk to him for a minute, okay, honey? Hi, remember us? Bald hamster with the runs? Oh, yeah. How's he doing? I'd say he's halfway up that stairway to heaven. <laughs> I can give him some cortisone, maybe some hormone therapy. Or we can flush him down the toilet, because I'm not spending any more money on this hamster. <laughs> it's another option. Okay, listen. I'm going to tell my daughter that you're going to give Baldy some special vitamins. You're going to keep him here overnight. Mm -hmm. Then tomorrow we slip a new hamster in the cage, and she won't be heartbroken. Deal? Deal. How is he? The doctor wants to keep him here overnight. He's going to give Baldy some special vitamins. So he'll be all right? Oh, I say by tomorrow, he'll be a whole new hamster. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Unless your father would have made a case for euthanasia. Actually, I'm more worried about children right here in America. <laughs> Daddy, you're the best father in the whole world. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Don't do it! Don't do it! Why 
What's your problem, pal? You didn't give him no special vitamin yet, did you? No, I was handling some personal business. I'm sorry. Look, forget what I said. I want you to do everything in your power to make him well again. And don't try slipping another hamster into the cage. I know this one from top to bottom. <laughs> Yeah, fine. You don't have to paint me a picture. I got it. Well, that's it. I've been fired from the perfect part-time job. The giant pigeon of life has dropped another one on Lenny Callahan's head. Well, aren't you going to say something? What do you want? I don't want anything, but the incredible Dino left the keys in the tuxedo, and he's got a Shriner locked in a box, and the guy's starting to sober up. <laughs> Fine, I won't be needing a tuxedo anymore. I'll be wearing work boots and jeans for the rest of my life. And whose fault is that? Well, it's not mine. Well, it's not mine either. Hey, where's the bird? <laughs> he could have been joking. <laughs> or maybe you heard him wrong. You're gonna have to pay for the dove, my friend. <laughs> maybe it was his way of complimenting you. I may actually owe him an apology. Apologize to him? Oh, that's perfect. Let me tell you something, Lenny. Women know certain things. We instinctively protect our young. We can sense when our mate's former girlfriend walks into the room. And we always, always know when a guy is just another sleaze bag on the make. Excuse me, are you talking about me? <laughs> no, we were just discussing the fact that I got fired because Shelly insisted on flaunting her assets. I was not flaunting them. Uh, Lenny, as I understand it, the whole point of the feminist movement was to give women the freedom to flaunt. I mean, that's why they burned all the bras. Well, you're in the right area, Eddie. Hey, what was the first thing I said to you when you first brought Shelly to the house? You remember? Great torpedoes. Thank you, Eddie. And she looks better today than she ever did before. Thank you, Eddie. And what about that caboose? Shut huh? up, Eddie. Hey, get out of here, Eddie! I'm just trying to help things out here. I'll see you later. Hey, Lenny. Try these. Look, Lenny, I know you wanted that promotion, and I know you want your job back. And if you want to go down and apologize to this clown for punching him, go right ahead. Maybe you were over the top. But don't tell me he was right. And don't tell me that I don't know the difference between a compliment and a come on. And don't ever tell me that dressing up and looking attractive suddenly means it's open season on women. You just don't understand, do you, Shell? I really wanted that promotion. I wanted it for you. I wanted it for the girls. I wanted it for our future. And I'll never get an opportunity like this again. You can tell yourself whatever you want, Lenny. But the truth is, the guy's a real jerk. Okay, maybe he is. But I'd rather be working next to him than opening the door for him. Kelly, what are torpedoes? <laughs> Actually, that's what Uncle Eddie calls breasts. He also calls them honkers, hooters, and tatas. <laughs> Uncle Eddie sure has a gift for metaphors. <laughs> I think Mom looked great tonight. If I had breasts, which will happen someday, I would wear that dress. Of course, I could stuff myself with socks and wear it right now. You don't own that many socks. <laughs> someone get mad over a little cleavage yeah what's cleavage <laughs> that's the space between your breasts all i've got is cleavage <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute, Miss Evans? Stay away from me, Callahan. Hey, I'm not here to fight. I just came to apologize to you. Miss Green, why don't you call security just in case? Yes, sir. Okay, Callahan. You want to apologize? I'm listening. I really thought a lot about what happened tonight, Mr. Evans. See, the thing is, my wife and I, we aren't used to these kinds of parties. We're a little nervous, and maybe we made a few mistakes. But this was a big opportunity. A chance of a lifetime for me, and I'd hate to blow it over some misunderstanding. So if there's any way in the world you can see a way clear to give me a second chance at this executive thing, I promise you won't be sorry. Well, it takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. I like that. So you give me another shot? Ah, oh, what the hell, Callahan. It takes a big man to apologize and a big man to accept it. Welcome back. Oh, thanks, Mr. Evans. I really appreciate it. You won't regret this. Oh, uh, by the way, Callahan. 
There was no misunderstanding. Excuse me? Let me give you a little advice. Any woman who dresses like your wife did tonight is asking for it. And I say that as a friend, Len, from the bottom of my heart. Nah. <laughs> hey, Evans! No! And that's from the bottom of my heart! You don't have to be calling security, I'm leaving. I didn't call security. Mr. Callahan, may I speak to you for a moment? <laughs> How are you this morning? Me? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Didn't sleep well, though. Seems someone locked the bedroom door. <laughs> okay, that's it. I can't take this silent treatment anymore. I hate that more than anything in life. Where do women come up with this silent thing anyway? Is it genetic? You all can do it. Is it passed on from Eve? Is this what you're plotting when you go to the ladies' room together? Please, say something to me, anything. I have nothing to say to you. Oh. Well, I have something to say to you. Look, I'm sorry for not understanding. I'm sorry he insulted you. I'm sorry for not being on your side. Most of all, I'm sorry you're holding that big kitchen knife. <laughs> By the way, seems that Evans was harassing a lot of women at the hotel. But they were all afraid to say something. Thanks to you, they're not afraid anymore. Oh, Baldy's feeling better. Look at him running full speed ahead, getting nowhere. <laughs> I know how you feel, Baldy. So what happened? The general manager fired Mr. Evans. He's looking for work. And you? I got my old job back. Did you hit him again? Uh-huh. How hard? I think I broke his nose. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs>